We've introduced quite a few ideas. Now I'd like to sort of summarize some ideas on how to improve the basic concepts, particularly around the use of this 4-up chart. As you probably have already noticed, that the 4-up chart is fundamental in terms of how we're going to do our data analysis and how we do this exploratory process, going backwards step by step in the process to go from the output variable into those variables that may be actually creating the problems for us in our process. And so the 4-up chart is actually a very powerful tool. Why is that so? Well, it combines internal process and external customer results. So we see the internal process in terms of the eye chart, the external customer results in terms of the capability study. So we get both an internal and an external view at the same time. It also gives us historical data that we can actually segment then by rational subgroups, as well as time series data that is enumerative so an analytic perspective all at once. So again, we get the analytic perspective from the eye chart and the enumerative perspective from the capability study. Not only that, but it decomposes these rational subgroups uh, and in turn, according to the information that we can observe about different categories that tell us where we should focus in terms of our further investigations. We get this from the Parader chart. And also the time series or the temporal sequence of changes that have happened as a process performed, which we can get from the ANOVA. Now, there are certain things that we can do to each of these charts to dress them up and to provide more information out of them. So, for instance, as we start thinking about these, we can go and take a look at the uh, individuals chart. And one thing we might want to do is to break the data by rational subgroup that relates to significant changes occurring in the process over the time period of interest. The way we do this is we go into the options menu in terms of the individual's charts and we see we can select stages. Under stages, what we can do is realize that if we put a column of data that identifies or relates each of the time series to the rational subgroup that we have of interest that we'd like to analyze, then Minitab will actually use that every time we change the categorical data. So if I change it group one to group two, that it will then create within group one a new set of control limits and a new average. And we can also have the tests applied within each of those subgroups differently. So I can see how the process will change for group one data versus group two versus group three. So this tells us then which rational subgroups are operating most according to the conditions it would like to. And it also helps to identify those best of the best, the Bob conditions, and the worst of the worst relative to the magnitude of the performance indicator that we have. And remember, from that performance indicator, we should know whether we want more, less, or hold it at the average. Now, another thing we can do is we can take a look at the uh, um, uh, ANOVA. And in the ANOVA, one thing we can do is we can right-click on the chart and add a reference line. And when we add a reference line, what we can do is we can take the calculated talk time and add it as a reference. What this does to is it gives us this bias in term, or, or indicator in terms of the level of the incoming order rate on that process. And if the box plots are all below that, that means that our process is not only uh, capable, it's also able to satisfy our customers. And if one process step is above that, it indicates that process is a bottleneck. So by adding this one calculation to that chart, we can get a much greater idea in terms of what's going on. Another thing we can do is we can take a, the Yamazumi diagram and process that ANOVA data the same way. So we go into the ANOVA table and we take each a look, of, a look at each of those steps and we analyze how much of the time in each process step are we actually uh, creating different types of waste. And if we just simplify it and we say, okay, this is... Uh, required work, uh, non-value adding, this is totally non-value adding work, waste, and this is value adding work. And then step by step in the process we can see what is that contribution in terms of each process steps for each of those three categories of waste. So as we're looking at that we would like to have only value adding work in each of the process steps. So this can tell us where we again want to understand more about the process in terms of the investigation into what waste is occurring in the process. So if we start thinking about it flexibly, what can we do in each of those charts to make us understand even more clearly what's going on? 
and how will we present that data to management? Many times in these charts, we'll see information that is not necessary for the interpretation of the lesson that we can draw out of that chart, in which case we should go and right-click on the chart and edit those charts so that they only present the information that supports the decisions that we're having and doesn't give us spurious information that is not really pertinent to, pertinent to the point that we are trying to make at a particular time. So, Again, focusing on these four up charts, using them more effectively, is going to be something that you will actually be uh, experiencing and developing as a capability for yourself over time as you do this more and more often. So let's, let's take a, a look now and we'll stop this video and we'll come back and we'll start thinking a little bit more about what is the measure phase and how do we go about that.